this tutorial starts with a song, but it's only a few seconds long. Let's get started with animation. I want to show you a problem with camera animation today and a hack how to solve it. And it involves an aim constraint for the camera and a motion path. Let me elaborate. Polygon modeling, a sphere which sits in the center of the scene. Now we create a new camera. The current camera is called perspective. Now we create a new camera from this menu, for example, create camera from view. It's called Perspective 1 now. It sits at the same position as before. We go to uh, frame number uh, 1, select the camera here, that's important. We don't want to have the sphere in selection, we want to select the camera. We're at frame number 1, we set a keyframe. Now we go to, say, frame 40, close to that object, and set another keyframe. This animation is beautiful. This is lovely, but as soon as you start turning the camera around that sphere, you run into a problem. Let's remain there, frame 60, and set another keyframe. That means just the camera remains at that position. And actually, let's move it like this, just rotate it slightly. So the animation goes like this, and you already see a problem happening. As soon as you uh, change the translation and rotation, it does strange things. And um, you see, it's, uh, the sphere moves to the left from the camera perspective and then back into the middle. So that's where it came from, and that's where it ends, and in between it should sit in the center, but the camera does strange things. With the camera selected, you can go to Windows, animation editors and graph editor and here you see the problem and I don't want to get into that but you can change these keys here and the interpolation for example by breaking the tangents or whatever um, it's complicated really because that mixture of translation and rotation makes strange camera movements because of the soft flow of these curves basically but not only so uh, this is uh, not really nice. So let's delete that camera. Create a new camera now. It's perspective one again. Set a keyframe. Sorry, we need to select it here. Set a keyframe for the camera. Now we get close to our object. Set another key. Stay there. Set another key. Um, and then we rotate around that object like this and maybe from the bottom, like this. So, remember we, when we did just did this, uh, the sphere was always in the center of the scene, but it is not when you run the animation, because of these, this mixture of translation and rotation. Now, we don't want to have that. We want to have the sphere in focus all the time, and uh, this is how we do it we go to a window where we see the camera. And uh, the easiest way to do this is a uh, middle mouse drag the perspective window, which is grayed out here, the perspective node, into one of these windows. So this is the camera, and you see the camera moves there, and r like this, and from the looking at it from the top you already see why that problem is. It's uh, much too close now, and it retreats, and the rotation just doesn't uh, work out nicely. So let's go back to the very beginning. The camera starts there and duplicate the camera. Control D. So it's called Perspective 2 now, the duplicate. Let's go back to Perspective 1, that's the original camera, and move to the next keyframe. You can use these buttons here. This is the next keyframe, which is 45. The camera is down there, duplicated. And then we go back to our original perspective and jump to the next keyframe, which is that one. And we duplicate the camera here as well. Go back to the original camera and you jump to the last keyframe, which is there, 
and duplicate it again. So now we have perspective 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. We don't need the first one, that's the animated one, because we just want to harvest the positions of the cameras here. And the camera 2 and 3 are sitting at the same position. I just move one a little bit further away from the other, just to make the things clearer for this tutorial. Now uh, I'll use these cameras only for one purpose, for creating a curve. Go to Curves and Surfaces. You can also use the Create menu here to create a curve, and this is the tool we want to use. And we'll create a curve going from this camera to that one in the back, to that one here, and then to that one. And uh, we'll do it by uh, point snapping, which is the key V. It uh, V turns on that magnet here, but I advise you to actually uh, use the shortcut on the keyboard, just the key V like victory. Um, I press and hold V and I click here. So this places the first cu curve point in the center of that camera. And now I do the same thing with a key V, place it here, place it here, and place it here, and enter. So that's the curve we have. It does strange things here, which we'll fix in just a second. Now we can delete all the cameras. So cameras just helped us create that curve. Um, what we'll do now is we um, press F8 in order to make the CVs vis visible here. One is here, next one is there. You'll see that you need more points actually. So let's go to object mode and rebuild that curve. It, the curve currently has three spans, so it's a very, very sim simple but highly effective curve, of course. Uh, we need to go to mod uh, modeling and go to curves, and down there you see rebuild. And you need the option box because you don't want to rebuild it to, from three to four spans, but maybe to ten. And you apply that. You can reset the settings if you want and close that window. Now when you press F8, you have many more dots on and around that curve. So you can fix this um, position here a little bit more easily, like this. You can smooth it like this, make the camera move a little bit lower. And then with the arrow keys, you can jump to the next one, try to create some kind of circle here, like this, which is, I think, really nice. Now we press F8 again to see the object mode. This is quite a smooth curve now. Now we want a camera which flies along that curve and constantly looks at this goal here. This is a, a nice hack, actually. I've seen quite a few tutorials which take big efforts to disconnect components, etc. But I think it goes quite easily here in Maya. And uh, this is how we do it. We create a camera with an aim now. Camera and aim. The camera with the aim is a node here which consists of a group. This is the whole group. And the group consists of two objects. One is the camera, that green thing, and the aim which sits right here. And both together are the group. If I move the aim, for example, the camera rotates. It does not move. The camera does not move, it just rotates. It has to follow that aim. And because of that, you cannot bind the camera to that curve. Because the camera will then receive two diverse informations. One is to keep an orientation along that curve and look somewhere maybe along that curve or 90 degrees away from it. From it. And at the same time, uh, it gets the order to focus on the aim. And this does not work. And the solution to this is that you choose the camera group, select the curve, and then go to Constrain. That's under Animation, Constrain, and constrain the whole group to the motion path. 
So the camera group sits now here. And it moves along that path. If you would have a look through the camera, which we'll do in a second, the camera looks somewhere into the emptiness and then it might have a view of the of the sphere but most times it looks away we want it to look to that sphere now you can select the aim and move the aim by snapping for example the V key to that sphere now the camera does look uh, to that sphere now let's use this window for that camera middle mouse drag the camera in here this is what the camera sees but it does strange things here and in this window you see why it does that it has the aim always at the same position and shoots the aim through the sphere and turns it around because the whole group is animated the whole group is so intact so uh, the camera and the aim move together and the solution is to constrain that aim to that sphere so let's select the sphere and then with the control key the aim or you can select it right here with the shift key in the scene and constrain point it's a point constraint now so the aim is currently in the center of that sphere so what does our camera do now it always looks to that sphere and when we have a look here that's exactly what we get and that's a very amazing solution to a problem which many people have to keep something focused and the camera motion at the same time independently last question and this is an obvious question if we want the view of the camera to move from say here to there how do we do that and we do that by selecting the sphere and for example go to frame 25 and fix the position there with a keyframe so I press S I go to a later point in time and I move my sphere over there and I set another keyframe and that's all I need so I moved the, the sphere now and the, the aim follows and of course if I want an object right here at the center I just duplicate it and if I want a, an object right at the end I just duplicate it and I can hide our original sphere it needs to be in the scene because it holds our aim but otherwise we don't need to render it because we have the spheres now here from the perspective one window it looks like this now and with having said this I wish you a very good day Bye-bye.